Hello, this is Kevin Bowersox, creator of the blog Two Thought. Today we will explore using the table per class strategy in combination with the inheritance annotation. In our last tutorial, we established an inheritance relationship within our object model using the inheritance annotation with the single table strategy. Today we will explore the table per class strategy and compare and contrast the differences with the single table strategy. A link to the previous tutorial uh, where we explored the single table strategy can be found in the description for this post. Uh, here you see inheritance with uh, the inheritance annotation. You can just click there and watch that video uh, and then proceed to watch this video and have a very good understanding uh, of what we're doing. Uh, this video will provide you with some context. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, uh, you can download the source code for the GitHub repository and that will give you the source I'm starting with. And then you can also download the completed version by clicking the GitHub icon below. So let's quickly recap uh, the work we performed in the last tutorial just to provide you with some context. Uh, the situation was that uh, we have a post and in our post table uh, we have we store two different types of posts. Um, one is a regular blog post uh, as we can see here in this row and then we also have content posts and the content posts are just posts that display maybe a URL or a video and we store that content URL so we notice for every content post we fill out the content URL and for every regular post that field is null uh, that's using the single table strategy so both of these entities which we can see in our object model uh, the content post here and we see that it's stored in the post table and the regular post we can see is stored in the post table so both of those entities are stored in the same table and what that leaves us with is we have some null values in this content URL field, URL field for uh, specific types of posts and then we have values uh, in some of the uh, the content URL columns for the content posts. So both entities stored in the same table and Hibernate and JPA are doing the mapping for us uh, to write to this table and to select from this table. So today what we'll be doing is we'll be storing the entities in separate tables. Uh, this is known as the table per class strategy so what I have done is I've created a content post table and I've prefixed it with ST for single table. <laughs> Probably should be SC for single class, but it'll work. And I've included only the appropriate fields for an entity. So we can see that the single table content post has the content URL and then when we look at the single table post we don't have that content URL. What you will notice is that we have a lot of duplicate columns between these tables. That was previously taken care of by using the single table and both of the entities shared these columns in the database. Uh, today we're separating them out using the single, I'm sorry, the table per class strategy. So let's look at how that is configured within our object model. So I'm just going to close these two classes and we have an abstract class that both um, post and content post extend. Oops. And we can see that by looking at the type hierarchy if I find the right shortcut. There it goes. So we can see in our type hierarchy that we extend the abstract post with those two entities. Now what you'll notice 
in the abstract class is that we're specifying our strategy for inheritance and we have it currently using single table so the first thing we'll do is we'll change this to table per class and now that we're using table per class uh, we no longer specify a table for our abstract class and we no longer use a discriminator column whoops I'm just hitting all the shortcuts today huh so now we've removed those two unnecessary annotations and our abstract class is configured for the most part we'll come back to this a little bit later now let's take a look at our entities first we will look at the content post and in the content post we see we have the discriminator value let's remove that and you can see we're looking at the post table since the content post will have its own table we need to specify that so I'm just going to change the name of the table we're mapping to and we'll save that and now let's go look at the post and we're going to do basically the same thing we're going to get rid of the discriminator value which is used by the single table strategy and we need to change this to the appropriate table okay at this point we have the two entities configured we believe so let's test this out and we'll use one of our tests we'll recycle so in this test you can see we have a abstract post repository and the first test will insert a regular post which we're creating here and then we're inserting it into the repository here and the second test will put in a content post which we're creating here and then use the repository to insert it so let's run our test and we can see that both have failed so let's see what the issue is hmm. it looks like our config didn't even build so our application context in spring did not work so that's not much to go on so let's increase the logging in the application to do that I'm going to open our palm and we need to provide an SLF4J implementation so I'm going to grab the simple SLF4J and now we need to create a new properties file uh, the log4j.properties file so I'm going to save that. Let's try our test again. Hopefully our logging's a little bit more verbose. Let's see if it kicks in. Yep, it did. Okay, so let's head to the console. And there we just had it. So we can see that it's complaining we cannot use an identity column uh, for key generation with union subclass. And it's pointing to the content post and this issue after some research you'll discover is that because in the abstract post uh, we're using the identity strategy and we cannot through table per class inheritance rely upon the auto number in MySQL to generate unique keys for both entities. So what we need to do is specify that it is using a table generation strategy and let's try our test again okay we're still failing let's go take a look 
And here you can see uh, this is a, kind of a feature of the table strategy. Hibernate is trying to make its own table to store the sequences for these tables and it doesn't exist in our database. Um, we're using Hibernate which allows us to auto-generate the DDL and the persistence context we're using is the two thought tutorial. So right now I have it set to create update. I'm just going to switch that to update. So now it will update our schema with anything that's in our object model that is not uh, within our database. And let's give this another shot. Okay, and looks like we have a duplicate key for one of our entities. Check that out. Okay, so it's trying to insert the first entity. It says there's already an entity with one in it. This is just a problem with our database uh, because we have created posts before. Um, it does not like us having those in there. It's trying to use the same ID. So let's just take that guy out. Oops. I feel like I'm deleting the wrong one there. Okay. I shall just clean that whole table. Wonder if we're going to get hit with foreign key constraints here. Nope. Okay. Now I'm going to clean out the content post table okay and let's run our test again with clean tables if I was on the right test okay and we can see that we inserted let's just check the database and so using the single table per class strategy, we, we were able to insert records for the two entities. There's one in content post, and there's one in the regular post. So we've set everything up. Uh, it seems to be inserting properly. Now let's look at one more aspect before we wrap things up. So I'm going to head back to our object model and I'm going to close all of these and let's look at the abstract post repository test and the abstract post repository so the abstract post repository is providing us with CRUD operations for types that are of abstract post and as we saw before that would include the content post and the regular post so we can head to our tests and let's try to select all of those entities so it will select from both tables so we'll do a find all test So it's going to select uh, from both tables all of the entities. Uh, so we actually get all of our abstract posts and even though they're not in the same table. Let's take a look at how it does that. So we're going to make a list of abstract posts and then we're going to use our abstract post repository to find all. And we'll import the list. And now let's just do a simple assert on it. And since we have a little bit more logging enabled, I want to make sure we can find this. Okay, so that's just going to help me find uh, some of the output we're going to look for. Okay, so we're going to insert these two entities. Then we're going to select all of them. Actually, not in that order. Um, JUnit can run the tests in any order it would like. 
So let's look at our console. And here's the part that I want to draw to your attention. We see it's selecting from abstract post. And actually, I'll just pull this out. So looking at that SQL that it's using, we see it's selecting from abstract post. Uh, it's pulling all the fields. And we notice it's only pulling the common fields for the entities. And then this is the important part. So here we see our first from clause, what it's selecting. And we see there is a, um, a sub criteria here. And this is the important part. We see it's selecting from the ST, the single table post table and the ST content post table. And then the way it puts them all together is this union. That can be a very expensive operation. So if our table was larger, the performance of this query uh, would probably be less than the performance if we were using the single table strategy. Um, so that's one of the drawbacks of using the table per class strategy is that when we select an entity using the abstract type, it's going to perform unions on the tables in which we store the actual entities. Um, another drawback is uh, we see obviously in our data model that we're duplicating all of these fields uh, at the same spot. You know, in our type hierarchy, we only have two types. Could you imagine if we had 15 types? And now you may be able to argue there's a better way to model those objects. Uh, but you could see how we could get a lot of duplication in our database. Also think, uh, if we had 15 types, then we would need to perform 15 unions uh, when we select across all of the tables that are included in that abstract post um, type hierarchy. Uh, so it's just some food for thought. I would probably go with the single table strategy just because of the issues that I've noted here. There's also the join table strategy, uh, which I'm considering evaluating in another post, depending on how well this one's received, if everybody feels it's useful. So I thank you for tuning in and listening today. Um, I'll hopefully have another post out soon. So until we meet again.